Okay, my friends, here it is. The much requested video on how to make a specific bloom fertilizer. So here it is, my friends. Now, I'm going to say some things about it, and then I will take you and show you exactly how to make this stuff, and then I will take you and show you in the garden uh, generally what plants really appreciate this kind of thing. So, a bloom-specific fertilizer is utilized about now in the season when the plants go from vegetative growth where they're putting out all of their leaves and their infrastructure and they sort of switch to the fruiting and the flowering and the reproductive development part of their life cycle and this is true for anything that has a fruit or a flower like a um, tomato cucumber eggplant pepper squash all of these kind of things uh, will appreciate a bloom specific fertilizer where, as opposed to like the leafy greens, the kale, Swiss chard, cabbages, stuff like that, you can just keep on giving it the uh, the regular balanced one with the nitrogen and stuff. So the re what makes a bloom specific fertilizer is that it is high in things like potassium, uh, magnesium, calcium, and phosphorus, and uh, many of the other minerals. But it is very low in the nitrogen because Typically, uh, nitrogen sort of induces luscious vegetative growth in the plants. It helps to make big dark green leaves and really luscious growth. But if you continue giving the plant nitrogen uh, as it wants to flower or as it wants to ripen its fruits and stuff, it can seriously delay the ripening. Delay the ripening of your tomatoes, delay the ripening of your peppers, uh, or depending on what kind of plants you're growing, uh, your flowers may not be as dense and tight as you would like them to be. And they might not produce the, the odiferous resinous oils uh, that you want them to produce if there's too much nitrogen. So for that reason, here in the next few weeks or month, we're gonna switch from using the things like the fish fertilizer, the urine fertilizer, the JDOM grass fertilizer. Um, these things are high in the nitrogen. We're gonna switch to laying off of those and using instead what I'm about to show you how to make. This is gonna be a very potent one because it contains what plants crave for the bloom cycle. And that is potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, calcium, sulfur, all of these kind of things. Uh, but remember guys, Magnesium is very important. It often gets overlooked and magnesium is the central molecule in the chlorophyll ion and it gets used up in the process of photosynthesis. So right about now, a lot of your plants are looking uh, like they're just baking in the sun because they are in desirous state of, of uh, magnesium because that helps them to photosynthesize better. And so this solution I'm gonna show you has the magnesium in it. Now, I do have to say that we are gonna utilize bananas for this. So uh, you can go to the co-op or someplace with the organic bananas and get a load of them if you wanna make a big batch. Uh, but guys, the commonly accepted type of banana tea that you just soak the banana peels in water, that does not work, okay? It doesn't work like that, guys. I'm sorry to be the one to have to tell you. But banana tea, as I'm seeing all over the internet and stuff, doesn't work. And this is why. Because no matter what you put into the soil, uh, banana peels, fish, manure, whatever it is, none of that stuff is available to the plants directly. It all must first pass through the digestive process of the soil food web. The uh, bacteria and fungi go in and eat there first, and then the protozoa and the nematodes eat that, and the arthropods, and it's a complex web of interconnectivity. And every step along the way, nutrients become unlocked into a form that the plant can use. And so we are gonna use this understanding of the natural cycle of things, and we are going to uh, hasten it all up in a bucket. So here we go. Okay, my friends, first thing we got to do is take some totally organic bananas and we're going to take out any of the plastic pieces. Now, we want to be sure that we get the organic ones, otherwise they could be sprayed with all kinds of gnarly stuff. So put us a blender full of uh, the bananas, as many as you can stuff in there reasonably, and then put about a liter of water in there. Don't get too hung up on the measurements, just put about a, enough to liquefy it like this. And then we have this nice gelatinous mixture we're going to add to a... Uh, uh, container. Now, I later actually switched this to a five gallon bucket, but uh, here uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm just uh, using this glass jar thing. But uh, so we're going to do two full blenders here, and we're going to pour it all in there, and then we're going to make a third blender, and we're going to put in it, uh, well, preferably rainwater if you have it available. I'm using filtered water. But next thing is going to be molasses. We don't use molasses in too much, but for this, we're going to use it because it's very high in iron, magnesium, copper, manganese, all the good stuff. 
it is really going to help to supercharge uh, the life in the soil as well. So we're going to use about a cup, cup and a half of the pure blackstrap molasses, unsulfured of course. Make sure it's the unsulfured, my friends. Maybe I'll put a link in the description. Next, we're going to use three cups of the uh, lactic acid bacteria serum. I'll put a link to this video at the end of this video if you want to learn how to make it. It's very easy. We make it out of milk and uh, you can do it all yourself. Blend it all up so that we got this nice, delicious looking and smelling mixture right here, like a frothy espresso. And then we're going to put it into uh, the container with the rest of the ingredients. Once we add everything, then we are going to give it a nice stir. So guys, while this is fermenting, you're going to want to stir it every couple of days because the uh, fermentation process is going to be a lot faster if we can keep it like this. So, so you want it to be about this consistency right here. Now you see here I transfer it to a uh, five gallon food grade bucket and every few days I just go down and turn it. Now after about two weeks, it's going to dissolve everything. It's going to become just a complete liquid. And that's the best time to use it. You can use it before that, after like a week or 10 days, but give it, give it two weeks before everything is totally dissolved. And this is all going to be plant available, guys, because it has passed through the microorganism uh, activity of the lactic acid bacteria. So we're going to use this stuff at one ounce per gallon of water. So here we have a five gallon bucket. We're going to add uh, five ounces of it. We're also going to add five cups of the wood ash fertilizer. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this video. The wood ash is very important, guys, because that is going to help us with the magnesium, the calcium, the potassium, all of it. So here we are and we have the uh, squash plant. And this is one of the ancient North American variety, uh, Native American varieties. And you can see here that it is putting out loads of these little patty pan squash. And they are super delicious, uh, thrown on the grill with some olive oil, real simple, maybe some rosemary. But they will love this fertilizer. Also, we are going to utilize it on these marigolds. And you can see how vibrant the color is in the marigold, how many blooms there are. All I use is this homemade stuff, guys. I mean, a combination of things. But, oh, look at this summer savory, guys. You got to get on the summer savory train. It is so delicious. Now, here we have the uh, uh, Tabasco peppers that are just starting to set fruit right now. So we're going to switch. We're not going to use anything with nitrogen on these peppers anymore. We're just going to utilize something like this bloom fertilizer. And you see here the poblanos have just started to set their fruit. They're going to be a nice yield, a nice set. And uh, so we want to encourage the and so and the cubanellas as well. We want to encourage all of this, all right, with this bloom fertilizer. Now uh, these are the big gym peppers that I like to dry, roast them, uh, smoke them, dry them uh, into pepper, ground pepper. But guys, look here. The uh, we can also use it at the uh, sweet potatoes. These vines are getting crazy. They are growing super thick and luscious, and uh, we want to use it for the sweet potatoes because they will also like this for the tubers. Tubers will also like this kind of solution. The root crops here, like the uh, the beets, are just starting to really come into production. This is the second planting of beets, and they're starting to do really well. Also, of course, the flowers. Here we have the purple zinnias that are just starting to uh, come into their own. And the pollinators are loving them. And so we're going to add some of this stuff to help encourage these vibrant, uh, healthy plants and these bright, beautiful colors. Don't forget to deadhead the plants, guys. You want to do that. See, we got mint, sage, petunias. Uh, milkweed, we got uh, echinacea here, which they love this stuff. Look at this monstrous fennel plant with just thousands of pollinators on it all day long. This stuff loves the good bloom fertilizer, especially at this point. It helps it to uh, produce those beautiful blooms. Now, here we are in the house, and as you can see, uh, this is a ludicrous amount of house plants, and this is the one one of the only homemade fertilizers I really like to use once or twice a year on the house plants to give them everything that they need. It will not turn rancid in the pot like many of the other JLFs and all of that. This one you can utilize for monstrous, ludicrous house plants. So that's pretty much it, my friends. If you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up. Also, share the video with anyone that needs this knowledge and share your thoughts and experience. Be sure to read the comments because a lot of people are leaving good experience-based knowledge in there. And remember, every Saturday at 12 noon Eastern time, we have a live Q&A right here on this channel. Check out the links in the description for all kinds of good stuff that I have found for you guys. And if you would like to learn how to make the lactic acid solution or the wood ash fertilizer, I would direct you to either of these two videos here.